YouTube videos at 8 o'clock at night. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Bullishan and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing another Hall of Fame video, but we're not in heavyweight for the first time in ages. Today, let's move down to bantamweight and featherweight. Today, I want to talk about probably my favorite boxer of all time, Prince Nassim Hamid. If you don't know who Prince Nassim Hamid is, you haven't experienced peak sports. This guy was just an absolute legend. The things he did were insane. They were out of this world. I'll bring, I'll come on to his son, his outer ring antics later. But for now, let's discuss some statistics and his in ring antics. He was 37 and 1 when he retired. 37 wins and 1 loss. Very impressive record. 31 wins by KO is a very impressive number, especially for a featherweight and a bantamweight. He stood at 5 feet 4.5 inches tall, which is pretty short, but I mean, yeah, the guy weighed like 118 to 26 pounds, so that's to be expected. He was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 2015. He had a southpaw stance and he held at different points in time the WBO, IBF and WBC titles. He was just generally known for his insane antics inside the ring. The things this guy did were nothing short of otherworldly. For example, his fight with someone whose name I can't pronounce, Said Lawal. I'm really, really sorry I butchered that name. On the 16th of March, 1966, one of the most mental KOs ever produced happened. I don't think they were 20 seconds into the first round and this guy was out. The, he was just, Nassim just ran in, uppercut to the belly, and that was one knockdown. And then he came, like, came straight back at him after the referee had stood him up and kind of made sure he was mentally aware of what was going on around him. And then he just battered him again and the referee stopped the fight the way he actually should have. His fight with Daniel Alicia is also pretty mental. The whole of the fight in general was, you know, pretty, pretty good. On the 8th of June 1996, my favourite KO of all time was created. It's mental. It's just... What is, what's the combination? It's like a left uppercut, an overhand right, and then another left uppercut. It's like boom, bam, ba. Boom, bam, ba. And it just, that's it, it's over. It's an amazing, amazing KO, I love it. He of course fought Bill Hardy on the 3rd of May, 1997, and actually made Bill Hardy cry. He punched him so hard, he made him cry in the ring. Like the guy was crying as he got back up to his feet. Go and watch the fight. You can literally see every time he gets knocked down, the guy's face is scrunched up and he's crying. It's he, of course, fought Paul Ingle on the 10th of April, 1999. And this isn't really an insane fight. It's a standard Nassim fight. But what really makes this fight mental was how he came into the ring. Now, Nassim is generally known for crazy ring walks, such as coming in on a magic carpet or recreating Michael Jackson's thriller. But this time he came in on a 1960s Cadillac. It's just mental. He'd also just, every single fight, he'd do a front flip into the ring over the ropes. Just, his fight with Augie Sanchez was also pretty mental. It was actually a pretty even fight largely. It was a very competitive fight. It's super entertaining. Go and watch it. It's an amazing fight. It's just fast paced. It's fun. It's hard to keep track of at times, but it's a great fight. It's a really great fight. But he KO'd him in the fourth and in true Hamid style, it was absolutely mental. Just ludicrous stuff. But of course, 11th of October 1977 is a date that comes to mind when I think of Prince Nassim Hamid because of his fight with Jose Badillo. What's funny is in the build of this fight, Jose was doing a lot of thrash talking. He was talking a lot of smack at the press conference and stuff. And just the most mental things just start happening in the middle rounds. I kid you not when I say Nassim started dancing. See for yourself. The uh, use of the shoulder. Again, that right hand working so well, and this is a very confident Hamid. And look at this, I think he's trying to do all this for the Sheffield fans. He's playing to the audience, trying to taunt 
for Padilla, who's taking all this. Once or twice in the past, Hamed has taken some stick. It's a sight to behold. It really is. And actually, Badillo's corner stepped in in the seventh because they didn't want him taking any more punishment. And of course, this fight produced another legendary moment in his iconic post-fight interview, where he called up Kevin Kelly, another very, very, very popular featherweight fighter, who at that point, I believe, was a champion? I can't remember. He brought up Kevin Kelly, sat down beside him on the edge of the ring, and literally told him to his face he was going to knock him out, and would you believe it? I think he did. And Kevin Kelly gets knocked out in the fourth round during their fight in late 1977. Late 1997. I'm really bad with these dates, Of course, one of his most impressive performances was against uh, Tom Boom Boom Johnson. He was a very, very capable fighter, a long time IBF champion, a very, very beloved champion. But that eighth round uppercut is sickening. My word. Like, after rocking him the third, Johnson was not the same person. He just was on unsteady legs the whole time, and Hamid took care of business pretty fittingly. Hamid's style was just mental, genuinely bizarre. Like, he always had his hands down, he would be jumping around the ring, be flinging himself all over the place, he'd throw these massive shots. He had almost no defense. His defense was paper thin, or a very unorthodox defense. He would like swing himself out of the way of punches, as opposed to just blocking like a normal person. Either he'd take the punches or he'd just dodge them, which he was very good at doing because his reflexes were lightning fast. It's unbelievable how fast his reflexes were. His style was unlike anything I've ever seen. It's like if you turned Ali's style up to a million. It's like, except Ali's was way more efficient. Like, unfortunately, because of hand injuries, Funnily enough, because of how hard he punched, because he punched so hard, he had loads of hand problems, he had trouble making weight, and eventually he retired when he was only 28 years old. But I feel like his style wouldn't really have progressed much more considering these kind of speed reflexes usually stay with younger fighters. Nevertheless, I think everyone will remember Hammett just because of how mental his career was. Just the ludicrous, absolutely mind-bending things he did in the ring. They just make you wonder sometimes. They just make you think, wow, that's something else. <laughs> it's, it's a, it, he's an incredible fighter. He's one of my favorite boxers of all time. And I don't think anyone's going to forget him anytime soon. That's going to do it for this week. I'm recording this on the exact same day I'm recording the Lennox Lewis video, which means my mic quality still sucks. I don't know where the headphones are, I haven't bothered going down to look for them, I've been up here for about an hour now, I'm now I'm putting off actually doing the Lennox Lewis thumbnail because I've only done the line. I haven't even done the line, I've actually only done the sketch. Next week, if I'm spared, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I don't know, what do you guys want to see? Let me know. Um, I'm, I'm, probably, I'm going to do another Hall of Fame video, just considering who to do it on. Floyd Mayweather? Could be interesting. No, then I'd have to talk about Logan Paul. <laughs> Actually, um, Jay Paul versus Tommy Fury is happening pretty soon. Can make a video on that? I don't know, we'll see. But anyways, thank you all for watching so much. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I love making it, and I will see you all hopefully very soon. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day. Goodbye.